Assalamu alaikum viewers, this is Safraz Karni from Pehlami Hub. Joining me today is Dr. Umar Hilmai from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, brother Safraz. Great to see you. Thank you. Yeah, great to see you again. Uh, today we're going to talk about apostasy. This is a very important subject and issue around the globe. And Dr. Umar Hilmai have done a lot of research on this subject. I would ask Dr. Umar Hilmai to share his research with our viewers. Go ahead, doctor. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you very much, Brother Safraz, for hosting me once again on your program. And um, uh, I will get into the topic directly. Uh, this is something that I think uh, uh, one can dedicate hours to discuss. But of course, we have to be respectful of the time. So we'll try to to make things succinct to 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 to, to make it to make the presentation not to exceed an hour to an hour and a half at most, but hopefully in the future, if, if there is a follow-up, we can we can do that. Sure, sure. Uh, you see, the, the first of all, uh, the word apostasy, and uh, there's another word which is uh, different, uh, fundamentally, is blasphemy. Uh, uh, apostasy and blasphemy, we'll come to explain them in a second, but uh, uh, since our our intention here is to discuss uh, apostasy, uh, or commonly referred to as ridda, ridda, to flip, to change, uh, ridda is to to revert, literally, to revert, to go back uh, okay. with something that you used to do, leave something new, go back to something that you used to do. And uh, uh, so we're talking about uh, uh, ridda and apostasy and blasphemy in the context of Islam, not in the context of Christianity or in the context of any other uh, creed or, 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 or uh, quote-unquote religion. Only ab about, uh, about uh, ridda, blasphemy, apostasy in the context of Islam. So uh, apostasy is typically uh, understood to mean to leave something that you accepted and go back to what you used to believe in, okay? I don't want to parse every word here because that will take us plenty of time, but let's put it this way. You, you accept the, 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 the understanding is that ridda or apostasy in Islam is that you accept uh, uh, you leave Islam to go back to a religion that you used to be believe in, or or you uh, renounce Islam, you leave it completely, okay, and go to nothing else, okay. So both are under the definition of apostasy or ridda, ridda, okay. R I D D A or R-I-D-D-A-H, okay? Now, uh, blasphemy, <laughs> blasphemy is typically a promulgation of something by a Muslim, again, in the context of Islam, and in the context of this phrase that, that people have used, that use a lot, uh, this phrase Islamic or Muslim tradition, in, these, in the context of both, blasphemy implies you uh, insult the symbols, <laughs> whatever these symbols are, the symbols of Islam as defined expansively and very loosely uh, by, by many people throughout, throughout uh, the centuries, including, including today, even including now. So these definitions are evolving, expanding, expansive, and we will talk about cases as we move on. So, so the, the cases of apostasy are clear. You know, someone says, I don't want to be part of Islam. I renounce my allegiance to this faith, have nothing to do with it. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, I have a question on that. So if you, let's say, for example, in clear words, I mean, if you're committing something, you commit, you know, you take a oath, you commit something. Let's say I took the oath, I'm become Muslim, and I'm you know going to follow Islam. And then after your commitment, after a few years, you said, "I'm not going to do it anymore." Is that? I mean, like, 
you can say that like you commit something and then later on so i'm not going to obey that anymore but but apostasy strictly has to do with the quote unquote the religion okay the religion not doing anything specific but renouncing the entire religion leaving the religion okay. after the commitment after you know i mean we're talking about things that only allah knows of course whether one enters islam or one leaves islam but this is the the framework through which people have understood the term apostasy okay okay but but do, do we but you raised an interesting thought do we really know if someone is a muslim to start with i mean if you know for that person to renounce the religion i mean we're not in that business nor we're interested but i'm talking about the broader context how it had been framed okay, okay. now so so the interesting things to start with is that the two things okay so a, an example of blasphemy is someone says that um, uh, i someone curses the prophet of islam the prophet muhammad muhammad the messenger of uh, of allah Okay, someone curses him, according to the Islamic tradition. Uh, someone uh, destroys a copy of the Mus'haf. Right. Uh, some, okay, but it's much, much, much more than that. Okay, much, much more than that. So blasphemy is a very, very expansive world of definitions, of terms, of, of implications, whereas blasphemy, uh, sorry, whereas apostasy is more restrained or more strict. To renouncing the faith okay, okay. okay. now uh, <laughs> the the interesting thing before we move on is that blasphemy is conflated with apostasy and some in the islamic tradition in the muslim tradition don't see a difference between them or they think that one is the same as the other right okay? all right and and please it's important to come back to this very important question because i want to talk about uh, uh, the 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 story of Salman Rushdie later on and sure. interpretation of the Quran and the relationship between these two issues to the subject of apostasy and blasphemy. Okay, yeah. so so while they are different, so so let's summarize. While they're different fundamentally, these are two different terms. They've been conflated so that historically you cannot tell much the difference between the two. In practice in as far as the implications are concerned all right so um all right uh, f uh and now what what b before i go into the definition uh, the, how did it come what do muslims think or what do muslim scholars or what uh, Muslim traditions, the majority of Muslim scholars, Shias and Sunnis, and the majority of Muslims, you know, we cannot just say Muslim scholars because those who believe in those so-called scholars or Imams are responsible for what they believe in. So they cannot dump it on the Imams. So we can say safely that the majority of Muslims, the majority, the vast majority of Muslims, by virtue of acceptance of these madahib of these so-called school of thought schools of thought they uh, accept the punishment of of black of apostasy which is uh, according to this framework of understanding is punishment is death is the death sentence so if yeah. someone commits an apostasy according to this tradition uh, then one should be killed Okay, there's no if and but. No. Now, who? Now, are we talking about medieval, uh, medieval uh, historical background, or or uh, first century, second century, uh, Islamic uh, Hijri century, or third or fourth or tenth? No, we're talking about things that people believe in, Muslims believe in nowadays. So here's just a a, a kind of a roundup of of contemporary. Uh, shuyukh, imams, scholars, men of religion, call them whatever you want, spokespeople, self-appointed sp spokesperson on Islam, uh, what they say about uh, about apostasy. Uh, let's uh, talk, let's consider the popular figures like Zakir Naik, 
Zakir Naik is not apologetic about it. He says that if someone converts, leaves Islam, uh, he should be killed. Okay. Uh, if we look at, for instance, uh, the, the arch uh, sheikh or the arch imam or the, uh, the arch religious re leader of uh, modern Saudi Arabia, Ibn Baz, uh, he claims, uh, he says that anyone who commits, uh, uh, who commits apostasy, i.e. leaves Islam, uh, should be, his neck should be severed, he should be killed. Okay, so Ibn Baz is a contemporary. It's not a medieval uh, uh, era. Uh, 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 Ahmed Israr, uh, I'll come to that in a second, but Al Jeffrey, Al Jeffrey is a very popular um, uh, sheikh, scholar. Uh, I believe he's originally from Yemen. Uh, he does not deny that there is punishment of death for those who, uh, the apostates, but he goes into a very, very interesting uh, loopholes with, to, 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 to claim that it is not applicable in the classical sense. I'm going to, to, to go there soon. Uh, then you have Asim al-Hakim, uh, uh, I think an engineer by training, uh, who has, I think, uh, more than half a million followers on YouTube. Uh, he comes out openly to say that anyone who converts uh, to uh, leave Islam should should be killed. No ifs and buts, no apologies. Okay, and his rationale behind it is is, is very very fascinating. Uh, then you have Al Qaradawi, Al Qaradawi, uh, who passed away recently, not long time ago, a few months back. Uh, he is of the opinion that apostate should be killed, but he goes into a very interesting classification of the types of apostasy that should be understood. This is a very interesting, you know. Uh, so, okay. And we're not going to go into his thinking. I don't think it's worth it. But but just to, to suffice it to say that he he parsed apostasy into different categories. Uh, then you have um, uh, Ahmed Israr, who is a very very who passed away. I think twelve years ago, a very famous Pakistani. Uh, yeah, doctor doctor Israr. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very famous, and he was uh, instrumental in establishing different religious groups with a huge following in Pakistan. Right. Huge following. Uh, he is uh, very adamant that the punishment of of uh, of um, uh, apostasy is death, and so people uh, murtad. Yeah, uh, murtad. Yeah, and people can can check this out, uh, verify all the claims that I made. Just go to the internet, put each one's name that I mentioned, and put apostasy or ridda, and you will find that uh, they went even beyond what I summarized here. Okay, yeah. I'm summarizing it for the sake of of, of time. Uh, and then you have uh, who I so so these are all modern contemporary uh, figures, very popular. Some of them are uh, extremely popular. Some of them are. Uh, some of them are uh, uh, not too popular, but okay. And then, if we uh, and and some of them represent major religious institutions, major religious institutions like Al Qaradawi, Ibn Baz, and so forth. All right. Now, in, 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 uh, also we have um, people in the West uh, like Jonathan Brown, who is also not uh, not shying from saying that apostasy is punishable by death in Islam, but uh, he goes into a very, very fascinating uh, narrative to, to, to show that it may not be applicable. And uh, if it is to be applied, it's one of those uh, hudud or punishments. Hudud actually shouldn't mean punishment. Hudud is, means limitations. But punishments that fall under the prerogative of the ruler okay all right so so this this is a quick you know background about definitions apostasy blasphemy what they mean also what modern people have thought what modern contemporaries 
uh, or contemporary uh, scholars and researchers and imams have thought of of them. Now, uh, the uh, uh, by the way, the the yeah. So, what what is what is uh, uh, now both Shia and Sunni Sunni jurisprudence both uh, did not differ that ridda or apostasy is a major offense punishable by death. Okay, uh, now the interesting thing, the most interesting and fascinating thing, this is the important point, is that none, none referred to the Mus'haf, a.k.a. Okay. the Quran, yeah. to justify this most severe of punishments. Okay, none. none. Okay. So, fascinating, very fascinating. This reminds us of the punishment of stoning for those who commit for 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 adulterers who are married and they commit zina or adultery okay the punishment for them according to the majority of the same people that we talked about is punishment by death okay so we have two severe punishments the ultimate taking someone's life okay that have no foundation in the mushaf absolutely no foundation okay now i don't want to you know divert from the subject but but we talked about before the contradictions between the hadith and the mushaf okay the, 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 sometimes the contradictions are so stark so stark that that uh, you are you know lost you have you, you you don't know what to say. The contradictions are so stark. If, if I tell you this is white and this is black and you tell me, no, you know, I don't think so, <laughs> what will you say to someone? Yeah, Dr. Omar, let me ask you. I know this is not the subject today, but <clears throat> since you brought up this about the killing, the punishment in, in Quran, in Masaf, the stoning is is uh, mentioned in, in Quran about the adultery or no? No, no, no. It's not mentioned. It's only it's mentioned. mentioned. Right. It's only it's only mentioned in the machinations of certain people. I cannot even say that it's mentioned in a hadith because a hadith are. No, I mean, are, we're not talking about that. So. Yeah, no, no. It's not. It's not absolutely not at all. I mean, the the punishment for zina, which is understood broadly as a, a, a relationship, a sexual relationship between a man and a woman outside marriage is right. by lashes. That's it. Okay. Yeah, there's no, no, no stoning concept in Quran. No, no, no. Stoning concept doesn't exist. I mean, doesn't exist at all. Yeah. Does, doesn't exist at all. So anyway, so 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 both Shias and Sunnis. Now, what are they? Where did this apostasy business come from? The punishment for apostates come from. Okay, right. so it comes basically from the Sunni side from two hadiths, two. Okay, only two hadith. Now, b before I continue, you know, we talked about the contradictions between between the Sunnah and between the the Sunnah slash hadith, and they are different. Of course, Sunnah and hadith are different. But between Sunnah slash Hadith and uh, and uh, the Mus'haf, you know, an example of which is is sometimes the the contradictions are, are and the differences are so stark. For instance, you know, Allah says Al Hajju Ashwarun Malumat Hajj are designated months. The Hadith right. says Al Hajju Arafa. <laughs> you know, yeah. which I mean, months right. is is the plurality of days. Arafa is one day. One. Yeah. I mean, you know, that, that makes us sometimes revise our concept of logic and our concept of brain, how the brain functions. That okay? is true. <laughs> so, so there are two, had, two, two hadith, okay? The first one, so narrated, I'll so quickly go to the English. It's mentioned in Sahih, in, in, in Sahih al-Bukhari. By the way, just to remind the listeners, Sahih al-Bukhari is a technical term. It does not mean authentic Bukhari. So if you want right. to translate it, it's called Sahih al-Bukhari. It's a term. Okay? Term. It's a term. Okay. Uh, it by no means implies that it is authentic or the Prophet said it. It's 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 a technical term based on a certain methodology. 
whether right. the methodology is flawed or not, that's a different business that we are not going to talk about right now. But narrated Akrama, Akrama used to be uh, a servant, according to historical records of Ibn Abbas, I think, I could be wrong, but uh, there's so many co contradictions, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> whether I'm right or wrong, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, right. what matters is that is that the hadith that people use, and it says that some zanadiqa, a word that which is a word that loosely refers to atheists, by the way, zanadiqa is a very bad word in Arabic. You know, to tell someone you're zandiq, wow, it's a mouthful word, but typically refers to as atheist. So we're brought to Ali, and he Ali, Imam Ali, the 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 uh, the fourth caliph, and he burnt them. The news of this event reached Ibn Abbas, I continue by the way, the hadith, who said, Ab Ibn Abbas said, if I had been in his place, I would not have burned them as Allah's messenger forbade it, saying, do not punish them, anybody with Allah's punishment, i.e. fire. I would have killed them according to the statements of Allah's messenger. This is it. And this is what Ibn Abbas is, is alleged to have said, is alleged to have said about the prophet quote whoever changed his religion then kill him in arabic man baddala deenahu faqtuluh man baddala deenahu faqtuluh notice this the hadith is addressing a singular a singular uh, pronoun yeah. man baddala deenahu not plural not man baddalu deenahum so he's talking about a single person singular man baddala deenahu whoever Whoever changed his religion, kill him. Okay, now there's another hadith. Okay, there's another hadith, and that is uh, uh, that hadith is interesting um, uh, because the other hadith it touches upon what you just mentioned. L look, it's not a coincidence that you thought of the punishment of of uh, of married adulterers by by stoning because the other hadith that they use combines the two you know combines the two what is the other the other hadith says that uh, i loosely translated you cannot kill the uh, uh, a person who declares the shahada and that i am the hadith continues that i am the rasul of allah except if that person does three things uh he is a, an adulterer who is married. Two, he killed another person. Three, the one who leaves his religion and leaves the group. Mm. The political overtone of this hadith is incredible, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wonder which Umayyad uh, ruler or Abbasid ruler uh, created this hadith. Most what likely. Yeah, Most what group they're, they're talking in their own group? <laughs> <laughs> Most likely, though. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to to make this a funny thing, but but it's it's a, it's a serious issue, very yeah. serious. No, I I cannot help it, but uh, but uh, to laugh at how they cooked up these uh, narratives and they claimed or they alleged that uh, the prophet said them because Allah uh, the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Allah warned the the messenger he warned him severe warning transmit convey what i reveal to you convey what i reveal to you and if you don't i will torment you so i mean when when did allah talk to muhammad the messenger in this tone think about it where in the Mus'haf did he talk to him in his, in this severe, frightening tone? Okay, and and then and then we see that the Prophet completely comes up with something from his own machinations. You know, so from, now from the Shia side, Al Kafi, which is very reputable amongst the Shia uh, part of Islam, Shiaism. Uh, they have the following hadith, and I quote, I heard Imam Abu Abdullah as-Sadiq saying, quote, 
a Muslim from among the Muslims who renounces Islam and rejects the prophethood of Muhammad and considers him untrue, then verily his blood is lawful for anyone who fears or he hears that from him. His wife is to be separated from him the day he became murtad. His wealth will be divided amongst his heirs and his wife will observe the idda of a widow. The imam is obliged to kill him and not ask him to seek forgiveness. Wow. So this is the Shia uh, imam. This is Al-Kafi, yeah. This is in, in one of the most respected Shia. And this is referring to what As-Sadiq, one of the imams, have said. I think he was the sixth imam. I'm not sure. Fifth or sixth imam. Doesn't matter. Okay. So, so, and it's really interesting here, this hadith is so severe because uh, many other imams said that at least give him the chance to repent. Give him a chance, last chance to repent. Right. This hadith says there's no yeah. even repentance. Yeah. Okay. Another Shia source, because we have to balance it, we give two, two examples from the Sunni side, we're going to give two examples from the Shia side. Okay, so uh, another hadith. Uh, f uh, uh, so from the Shi from the Shia side, the other hadith is is attributed to Imam Al Rida, so who was again one of the twelve imams. And uh, I quote: I read a question in handwriting of a person addressed to Imam Abu Hassan Al Rida. Okay, quote. The quote starts from here. A person born as a Muslim then becomes a kafir or mushrik and leaves Islam, should he be asked to seek forgiveness? Or should he be killed and not be asked to seek forgiveness? The Imam wrote, he should be killed. So this, this supports Patras is the earliest uh, Jafar al-Sadiq, uh, Imam al-Sadiq uh, uh, claim, allegedly, allegedly. Imam al-Sadiq may have not said that. I, I personally don't believe that Imam al-Sadiq have said that, okay? These are the descendants of the Prophet and they have a tradition of following uh, the message uh, carefully and uh, for them to come up with uh, something like this, I, I don't think that uh, they, have, they have done it. Okay, so now, uh, now uh, let's see, so, so, so I, that's it, I just gave you the foundation on which the the clay the claimants of apostasy the punishment of, of death for apostasy they rely on i i just summarized it. it's, it's funny i mean it's interesting also that none of the foundation is based on quran they're creating their own stuff they're fighting Absolutely. their stuff they're making jokes or whatever they're going left and right and Absolutely. then creating problem from themselves for example, if Allah has, let's say, Allah say, I'm going to give you a test. Today is the test day. Today you come and prepare. I'm going to ask questions from the Quran. Everybody, 99% people will fail because they don't, they don't look at the Quran. They're going left and right, looking it's, all the it's, rest. It, 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 it's, 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 it, you know, the only way I can explain it is that there's a, a conspiracy against the Quran. There's really a conspiracy against the Quran. Because the, 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 the Quran is is clear. It, it is not, uh, cannot accept uh, playing around with it. Okay? Yeah, yeah. لا يأتيه الباطل لا يأتيه الباطل من خلفه باطل cannot surround. Uh, you know, when, when, when I present to you a, a stone, okay, this is creation, stone from the mountain. What can you say? It's a stone. Whether you like it or not, it's a stone, right? right. If I show you an ocean, it's an ocean. It's if, an I ocean. Point, if I point uh, you to the moon, whether you like the moon or not, it's, it's there. It's the moon, you know? So, uh, so that's the difference between the Quran, which is al-haq. It's al-haq. Right. And everything else which people have created. Now, but let, let's... Uh, Let's see what the Quran, what the Mus'haf says. Exactly. Let's see what the Mus'haf says, okay? So the most famous verse that the, the, the advocates of apostasy don't, don't uh, deny, and I'm going to go through their arguments in a second after I mention the, the, what the Quran says about what seems to be 
عن apostasy يعني act of apostasy sure. uh, البقرة سورة 2 verse 256 okay. Okay. we just want to focus on the first uh, uh, phrase لا إكراها في الدين لا إكراها في الدين so what does this mean the instrument of comp- of of enforcement if ikrah ikrah means to force you to do something that you don't like right. ikrah comes from karaha to hate okay so the religion naturally allah is telling us hey, this is a fact he's not telling us don't force people right but, not compulsion yeah, yeah. Uh, no he is stating a fact la ikraha fi din if he were to ask us to not to in, to to force people he said la tukrihu he would make right. it as, as a command but he didn't to use uh, the command tense la ikraha fi din okay that's number one. okay and in 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 1099 surah 10 verse 99 allah says walaw sha'a rabbuka la amana man fil ardi kulluhum jami'an فأنت تكره الناس حتى يكونوا مؤمنين. I assume that Allah is addressing the messenger and he's telling him and and if your Lord's will, ربك, and if your Lord's will was that all people on earth they become مؤمن believers. Let's say for now مؤمن believers. Okay. Right. Are you going to are you going to force okay. him? Are you going to force them to become mu'mineen? Right. L- l- look how, again, notice these two words, wh- uh, these two verses, what was common between them, a derivative of the word karaha. Right. To hate, ikra. You know, tukre in the second one, yeah. and ikra in the first one. How how clear can it be? How clear? Okay. Now, uh, uh Now, of course, <laughs> well, if, uh, we, if we were to take that 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 uh, that hadith, من بدل دينه ف ف فقتلوه. Of course, there's bizarre uh, uh, implications. What about someone who converts from Christianity to Judaism under the under the guise or the rule of an Islamic or Muslim government? Should you kill him? Or if someone converts from Christianity to Islam, should you kill him? according to the meaning of the uh, to the to the meaning of the of the hadith of course they, 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 the way they answer that is that they say well it's obvious <laughs> it's obvious that the, the the message is for to those who convert from some from Islam to something else you know yeah. now now it becomes obvious now there's no context. And speaking of this, before I go further, there's an important point to to make, is that what what is the context of this uh, of this? Let's assume, let's assume, by the way, that this hadith is meaning that the prophet, the messenger, did say it. Let's assume. Uh, what what is the context? Okay, what is the context? Let's say, let's say that it was flipped. The meaning was the words were flipped as a common tradition in the so-called Senate uh, 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 chain. A common tradition is to play, I'm sorry, I want to be frank with you, is to play with words, is to change words, to convey the meaning that you thought was there. Okay, right. We know that words, the meaning of words change. The meaning, of, you know, 50 years ago, certain words don't mean what in English, in English, 50 years ago, certain words don't mean what we, what they mean right now. Okay. All right. So after within 200 years, imagine within 200 years, uh, people must have played with words. Anyways, but so, so the context, so this brings us to the question of the context, brother. This is a very important question. Now, They, the framers of the parallel religion, and I've been, you know, using this phrase for some time. The framers of this parallel religion, i.e., following something other than Islam, okay, i.e., following something other than the Mus'haf, okay, i.e., following things that are contradictory to the Mus'haf. The framers 
all these framers tell us that you cannot understand the Mus'haf without yeah. the reasons for revelation, right? Asbab al nuzul So they say that you need a context. And right. some of them went, one of them, some of them went to the extreme to dig up philosophical, historical narratives to say that big philosophers have said that you cannot understand a text without its context. Yeah. I don't believe in that, number one. But aside from me believing it or not, the issue here is that let's take their word for it. So Quran cannot be understood without Asbab al nuzul the reasons for the revelation, which according to them provides the context for understanding the Mus'haf. What about the Hadith? If the Hadith is Wahi, if the Hadith is Wahi too, shouldn't I need a context? for the hadith, but the, the context of the hadith is completely missing. Now, interestingly, and most fascinating is that what Al-Jafri, Al-Jifri, sorry, Al-Jifri, by the way, I'm mentioning names here, not in the in the, in the the sense of ridiculing people. We don't do that business, yeah. nor, nor do I want anyone to ridicule, but we are talking about concepts, right. ideas that certain people, so I don't want to keep it completely uh, uh, vacuous this discussion I don't want to keep it completely vacuous I have to mention concepts and I have to attribute them to certain people okay all right so so al Jifri uh, is saying well let's understand what happened throughout history let's see what happened throughout history to understand how this hadith should be implemented mm. what? So you need to see what people throughout history did as evidence of a certain interpretation of the hadith. Yeah. I mean, that logic is amazing. Okay? Yeah. So, so I have to wait for what people did. I have to wait, for instance, the, the, the so-called, the, this term, the Sahaba, it's a technical term, again, technical term doesn't mean good or bad people at all. The Sahaba, when they fought and killed each other by tens of thousands, by the tens of thousands, okay? Within 30 or 40 years after the death of the Prophet, I would take their actions as part of Islam and I would build their interpretation, build, build an interpretation for an alleged hadith based on their history is this how religions work you know so so the the I, I will come i will come to another aspect later on which is in related to this but for now let's 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 move on dr Omar, i have a question about surah Baqarah 256 yeah uh, so i mean obviously there's no compulsion in the religion yeah. One of the lectures I was watching, uh, I think he's a Shia scholar, somebody asked him the same thing. When there is no combustion, why are you still killing people because of uh, you know, apostasy? He say then that's the question I asked you in the beginning of the show. And he's answering, he's saying, well, you know, you made a commitment. There is no uh, compulsion to make the commitment. But once you make the commitment, you back off after that, then there's a problem. He's given an example. For example, the United States and Constitution. Some states, you know, I mean, there is a Constitution. There is a death penalty if you do the treason. You're going against uh, something, you take an oath. So you, and he was giving an example. Even in the U.S., uh, they give you a death penalty if you commit treason. So why don't you think that you made a commitment about the religion and then you back off and you're trying to uh, trying to get people together and make a bad name about Islam and I just why don't he was just saying that he didn't say that I, 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 I know. Islam, I've seen this argument I've yeah. seen this argument advocated by by several people I think someone yeah. started it right, right. <laughs> and then others started copying and pasting but aside from that I've seen that argument the, the 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 interesting thing is that uh, Islam is a relationship. Islam is a relationship 
this is the key point, and I'm very glad you mentioned it because I wanted to talk about it later, but now I'll talk about it, and then we'll continue uh, with that uh, thought. Uh, Islam is a, is, a, is, a, is a relationship between a person and his Lord. Right. Okay? It's not a relationship between me and the government. Very good point, yeah. Okay? So, what Allah asked me, no one else has any uh, business. Any uh, business. Right. Any business. Okay? So, to, 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 to think of leaving Islam or leaving any religion as mutiny is preposterous. Is absolutely preposterous. I mean, I, 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 I you know, it, it, it's. I don't see the connection when, when you, when you, it. And this is not exactly, by the way, a full analogy. Here, brother, Sir Faraz, uh, how many people renounce their U.S. citizenship? A lot of people. And they go to Europe. There's a famous yeah. singer in the 1980s. You want yeah. to mention her name very very famous popular she's living in switzerland she said i have nothing to do with the u.s i, right. I give them back my passport did did the u.s go and put her name on the interpol list wanted no <laughs> okay uh, in canada where i live many people find it onerous sometimes to pay the u.s taxes you know they go back and forth not by the way for those who live in canada for those who live, they don't have but someone who goes back and forth and works in the u.s some of them they say why shouldn't i renounce my citizenship and they right. renounce it and they continue to go and do business in the u.s and, and they, do they pick them up at the border i mean who came up with this concept now the, the if if you treason treason is is a completely different world is a completely different thing treason means that you are actively engaging in an act against the state actively <laughs> you know oh, yeah. how many look how many people in the u.s sometimes burn the flag are they rounded up and they're put in 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 in, in jail Come on, I mean, this is reality for those people who use these silly, sorry to say it, these funny examples. So, so it, it, treason, you, you, or sabotage, or working against that state, meaning you give secrets, you know, like Pollard, who gave secrets, Navy secrets, uh, to Israel. He was thrown in jail for, I don't know, 30, 40 years. Someone who picks up gun, a, a weapon uh, against the state. Uh, someone who has a mutiny, a military mutiny. Of course, it doesn't need to be the U.S. Any any country in the world which is governed by laws, and you break these laws, you will be held accountable. So this 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 thing. The the other aspect is that it, it, they connected Islam with the ruling elite, hand in hand. Look. They connected historically Islam with the ruling elite. So they didn't want to separate the two. Okay? So if you leave Islam, you're leaving the ruling elite. Why? Because the ruling elite created the Islam that they wanted you to follow. So now you're independent. What? Now you're independent. This is this is this is dangerous. Now you cannot go and wage jihad in the name of the ruling elite to get more money, woman and land okay dr umar what about those uh, people who are in islam and uh, so-called muslims and they left the religion they become atheists now they have a lot of youtube channels and they been, they're giving left and right and making fun of quran and stuff what do you think about those people so, uh, you, you make fun of quran uh, many many muslims make fun of uh, of the bible yeah that's true T who are we better no, Allah, that, says, Allah, that, Allah says in the Mus'haf, I will judge between you, the Jews, the Christians, the Sabi'een, and uh, I will judge between, I will judge between all of you. It means that I'm going to treat you equally. You know, uh, what, you know, when, when we talk about loose things, and I'm going to talk about the Zandaqa, the uh, Zandaqa and blasphemy and all of that, that's very important. Um, what's the definition of making fun? 
you know that when you when you uh, listen to some muslim preachers anyone who challenges who challenges this parallel religion is 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 labeled as digging there's a word in arabic it's awful ta'an yata'an yata'an literally means to take a dagger and to push it inside someone mm-hmm. <laughs> you know they they they're doing right. active uh, 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 what dagger does i don't know the verb daggering something like that <laughs> you know in the heart of islam islam is islam is islam islam is the truth you cannot put a d- dagger you know you right. cannot dig into it but uh, 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 what what's the definition you see uh, why this is dangerous before and we will continue with the verses because the verses are important why this concept of blasphemy is dangerous because I can come up with my definition of an insult of Islam. Just like what Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Taymiyyah, the one who uh, structured the terrorism, the concept of terrorism in, 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 in Muslim tradition, the one in Islam, in Muslim tradition, you know, he said, if, if someone uh, curses the Prophet, chop his head. What? Right. Okay, you, you think if, if Muhammad Rasulullah was around us and someone curses him, he would say chop uh, his head? That's what I'm saying. He, he never said anything to kill anyone. So I mean, is this is this the religion which is rahmatan lil alameen, a, a mercy for mankind? He he sent him as a, a as a mercy for kind. Now the to continue the other side of the question that you posed, uh, as someone put it very nicely, and I really don't remember the brother who said it. He said. If, if you would consider entering Islam, uh, uh, if you would enter it at, at your free will, and then you cannot leave it, it's similar to the mafia, the mafia organization. The mafia organization, you 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 know, you, the only way to leave it is to be found uh, hanged under a bridge. Yeah, that's what happens once you're, once you're in the gang. <laughs> is, is, is Islam is Islam a, a, a collection of gangsters? Yeah, uh, Muslims a collection of gangsters. So if someone goes and renounces Islam, and and uh, let him say whatever he wants, you know, let him. Uh, uh, is are Muslims so weak, so lacking? You know, in fact, many Muslims who follow the parallel religion have ceased to think. Have ceased to think because the parallel religion telling them not to think, not to right. think. When after a while, by the way, if you don't think, guess what? Then your ability to think diminishes. Right, that's true. It, 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 it's, it's science. I'm talking about science. After all, if you don't think, your ability to think will diminish. If you don't turn the car on every month, after four or five months, the engine will have a problem. Right, that's true. It will start squeaking and all of that. If you don't exercise for five months, you know, some women, when they're pregnant, they're asked to lie in bed. They have serious, you know, health issues. They have to lie in bed. And it will take them a while to get used to back to the way they used to function. Okay, because the muscles were dormant at idle for yeah, so the brain our brain if we don't use it you know we lose it as as they say so so you know of course you know uh, i these 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 of course these these examples and many more can be mentioned but anyways did you have another question brother before i well this is a same in a similar uh, context it's you know this some of the scholars say this has been going on the bible has that too in their literature they give reference to the bible the killing is valid if you know apostasy and i think i think that apostasy has creeped the concept of apostasy has creeped into muslim tradition from from uh, from christians i think Christian, yeah. i i really think so i i i don't think it came from Judaism, I could be wrong, but I really think it came from uh, Christ, uh, from I wouldn't say from Christianity, but from Christians. I want to be careful. Christianity doesn't call for apostasy, but from from Christian, if I may use the term Christian tradition. Okay. Now you see the the problem with that. Before we continue, is that I can label you 
I can label you as an apostate. And the many, many cases, many cases, there's a famous uh, 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 academic and a scholar. I'm sorry, I just, his name escapes my mind. A, a very big story, I should have remembered this, but uh, he, he's a contemporary. Uh, he is advocating a different interpretation of the Quran only. Look, look his sin. Just, we have to interpret it differently. You know, the Azhar, the, the religious establishment, we're talking about the Azhar, the modern Azhar. Yeah, the religious, in Egypt, the religious establishment declared him an apostate. And guess what? And they forced his wife to divorce him. He ended up going and finding a job in the Netherlands, I believe. Right. So so they, they declared him an apostate. So in in history, you know, some apologists, they say that, wait a minute, how many were killed in, in, in Muslims' history uh, due to apostasy? 50, 60, 100, 200? No, much, much, much more. Because even at the time of, of, of the creation of the schools of thought, the so-called schools of thought, and I call them parallel religions completely, the Hanafis, the Hanbalis, and so forth, they declared someone, anyone who disagrees with a certain interpretation of the Mus'haf, an apostate. Yeah. Like, Look, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying they, they labeled someone who disbelieved in the Mus'haf. No, no. Th those who believe, they, they claim that anyone who does not believe that Allah has a hand is out of Islam. Now, his hand is something else we have to figure out, but anyone who doesn't believe it's part is outside Islam. So the, the 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 scope is very expansive of who can be, uh, 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 who is blasphemous and who is an apostate. Let, you know the, the case of uh, again, it's very important to mention this. The case of Salman Rushdie. Yeah, Salman, Salman Rushdie. You know Salman Rushdie. I think Imam Khomeini declared him a a, a, a blasphemy blasphemous or apostate or something like this right. he said that uh, uh, according to islam he should be killed now what what was the sin of salman rushdi you know uh, salman rushdi uh, uh, of course very clever he amalgamated uh, literature with reality fiction with uh, non fiction okay uh, very very smart strategy many people do it to express something without being held accountable okay but but the key contentious thing is that the, the 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 claim that he made in his fiction non-fiction amalgamation is that the, uh, Muhammad Rasulullah used to have uh, verses that would be revealed to him not from Allah but from Satan, Shaitan. Okay, you know what? Guess who said that in our in Muslim traditions? Ibn Kathir, the most respected mufassir, exegete. Right, the most the most uh, famous uh, uh, person who made exegesis of Quran, Ibn Kathir, he said that himself. Mm. He got away with it. Why, right. why, why don't Muslims think that uh, Ibn Kathir is an apostate? Yeah. Right. So my point, my point, is that it's very easy to declare someone as an apostate, okay, or someone who is insulting Islam. Look. I was in a, in, a, in a meeting with some relatives, and a distant, not too distant, but uncle. Uh, I was I was having a conversation with him, and I was telling him that evolution does have foundation in the Mus'haf. You know what he said? He looked at me with a finger, and he said, "This is kufr." He said, "This is kufr." So, if I were to live in that country, and I was to make these ideas more public, someone probably would say. You know, maybe I should eliminate this kafir. I will go to heaven, right? See how dangerous it is? Extremely. So so the claim that only 50, 60 people, you know, were killed due to do, uh, do the laws of apostasy is absolutely unfounded. Absolutely unfounded. Many people were put at the stake just because they were labeled zanadiqa. And, and we know from our history, there were times when if you differ, if the Hanafis differ from the Malikis or the Malikis differ from the Hanbalis, they would declare the other one outside the realm of Islam. So if they declare them, it means that they are worthy, that, that, it's, that they can be punishable by the Ridda. Uh, uh, so let, let's, let's see what, let's see what, uh, uh, what uh, Allah continues, because the, 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 the final, the final uh, say is Allah's say.
of course. Right? That, that's the final say, okay? So Allah, so I mentioned, let me just drag this uh, because I want to say this correctly. So Allah uh, continues. So I give you a few verses, yeah. but there's more, okay? Sure. Um, Allah says in verse uh, 1829, sorry, 1829. Okay. Allah says, وَقُلْ أَلْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ And promulgate. Right. Announce. Al-Haqq, truth is from you, the Lord. Look. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ Whoever wills, whoever chooses or wills to right. become a woman and whoever chooses to become a kafir. Uh, this okay. is, yeah. I mean, what 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 more uh, should we should we say? But let's go further into the Quran, into the Mus'haf. Five fifty-four, Surah five, verse fifty-four. Ya ayuh ladin amanu, O you who have made iman, man yartadu minkum an dinu. Here is a verse which has ridda, a derivative of the word ridda. Man yartadu minkum an dini. Announces or leave his religion. Look how beautiful the continuation. So Allah stand, look, Ya Amanu, whoever is going to renounce or leave his religion, yeah. then Allah will Allah will uh, bring other he, believers, right? He will He will they love Allah and Allah loves them. أذلة على المؤمنين أعزة على الكافرين kind towards the mu'minin very strong against or on the kafirin يجاهدون في سبيل الله they will exalt they will do all their efforts in the path of Allah and the, to the continuation to the end of the verse now look look how beautiful this it's a you know it's a positive verse, the only verse that has Ridda in it, I think, I could be wrong, but the only word that has Ridda or a derivative of it, it came in a very positive, lovely positive. tone. Right. You know, it, it, it's really like someone who is telling two kids of his, uh, telling one of them, if you are not kind to me, he wouldn't say that I'm not going to be punished, I'm not going to punish you. I'm going to torture you. I'm going to deprive you of it. I am going to replace you with someone who may, who will love me, right. and I will love him. Look, th there's a positive tone. There's a positive message that encourages encourages the first kid, the the kid who was who was this father or mother talking to, to become to to seek a positive uh, action. Yes. Uh, uh, look, you Wait, yeah, please, brother. You know, going back to 1829, you know, they argue also about this ayah. They're saying, look at that. Allah is saying that we have prepared for the you know transgressors of fire that will completely surround them. They're saying if Allah will do that later on, why don't we just kill them here? <laughs> you know? Yeah, the, 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 you know the the uh, the. You know, this is the qawwal. This is creating something that is not in the verse. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. not, and it's not in the verse. Yeah. You know, so so when Allah says, and we're going to talk about this in a second, when Allah says, if people commit certain things, then I will punish them yeah. uh, if, if they do certain things, okay? That's not for people to punish them. Right, not for people, right? You know, the, the, there are certain things, uh, whatever, I mean, look, uh, many Muslims, they, they subscribe to the concept that if someone uh, uh, drinks, that should be punished. It's nowhere in the Mus'haf. Right. He drinks alcohol. If someone doesn't pray, that person should be punished. It's not in the Mus'haf. Right. If someone eats openly in Ramadan in front of everyone should be punished. It's not in the Mus'haf. It's not. Now, now, of course, you know, this reminds me of uh, what the Sheikh, the Grand Sheikh of Al-Azhar, I don't know the Grand Sheikh or the Mufti or the one of them, 
uh, I think the president of Al when he said recently that if, if you take all of these things that we call hadith and Islamic law and all of that, then 75% of Islam is gone. <laughs> Precisely, 75% of, of, of what they've added to Islam should not be there. It's not there. Okay, because they're not used to the concept that Islam is freedom. Right. Islam is not is not to 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 regulate every iota of one's movements in life. So let's look at the 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 other verse nine sixty six. Okay. لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم. Don't apologize. You have made kufr after you made iman. So, so you, you may interpret it, you may or may not, but let's say you may interpret it as a riddah. So you have flipped. Okay? Mm. Allah continues in in na'fu an ta'ifatun minkum nu'adir ta'ifatun bi annahum kanu mujumin. If we forgive a group of, from you, we will torment another group. Okay? So, so who is the one who will torment? Oh. Allah. When Allah says, when Allah talks about halak al qura the demise of al qura not villages, demise of the village of the qura إذا أردنا أن نهلك قرية أمرنا مترفيها ففسقوا فيها فحق عليها القول. I don't remember the verse number. Okay. Uh, yeah. When Allah talks about nahlik al qura to the, to bring a demise of Qura. Who, who is doing the demise of the Qura and in what and how? How? It's Allah's business. How is Allah's business? You know? Uh, who? Uh, who? Two questions. How and who? How is Allah's business? Who is who? Not me, Allah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very interesting. All of these ayats, uh, we have looked at it today. None of these are giving any authority to any human being to make the, you know, killings and do the punishment. He has the authority himself to do everything. So that's very interesting. All of these ayats, we look at it. And, and there's yeah. one more, one more, brother, if I may mention it. Uh, uh, 390, verse yeah. 3, uh, uh, su uh, sorry, Surah 3, verse 90. Okay. Uh, Allah says, uh, Inna ladina kafaru, those who made kufr, بعد إيمانهم after they made إيمان ثم ازدادوا كفرا then they become more stronger in their kufr higher level of kufr added لن تقبل توبتهم their repentance will never be accepted وأولئك هم الضالون okay وأولئك هم الضالون now if you were to interpret توبتهم that who, who is the one that repentance is made towards the yeah. king or Allah? <laughs> it's Allah. Yeah. See, so 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 let's assume, let's become extremely flexible and say that the tawbah is is to be done at the king's feet. Where does the punishment of death appear? Right. Nowhere. No. See, I, I, I'm giving you a a, a, a bit of a liberal. A trans uh, uh, interpretation and and the last one not the last one but several others let's say 2217 baqara surah 2 verse 217 okay uh i don't want to delete the whole thing uh, I, I, oh this is sorry this is the second one that has the word a derivative of the word ridda okay uh, I will uh, skip the first few phrases and I'll go to the middle. Woman yartadid minkum an dinihi, and whoever leaves or renounces his religion, fayamut, and he died, and he dies, fayamut. Wahwa kafir, and he dies on a state of kufr. Look, and he dies on a state of kufr. Right. There's no killing. He died. He died in the state of kufr. He was not killed. There's no killing here. There's no punishment of death. Allah continues, Their deeds have become vacuous. Right. Their amal have gone null and void. 
وَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ And those are the people of Nar. Okay? So, what more do we want? So, here are, you know, the, 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 the proof. Here are verses related to someone who leaves his or her religion. Right. And, and uh, there's, uh, there's no... Uh, there are others that I will skip because of time. But... Uh, so, uh, uh, why are we? What is the historical context of this? We, it, it's most likely, most likely that when the hadith was written, it was, uh, and we know that it was collected and written under the Umayyad and the uh, and the uh, Abbasid uh, rulers. Okay, those who had a strong interest in diverting the attention from the true religion to something else uh, the the it is easy to to think that um, it is really useful to come up with a hadith uh, to 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 make it easy to eliminate your enemies easy to eliminate your enemies okay so so we we don't have you know that we don't have direct evidence of this, but but uh, uh, the 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 it, it is ma makes a lot of sense because of Islam was a very powerful force. You it, and the 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 source of this force is the Mus'haf. That's it. That's Islam. Islam is the Mus'haf. Okay. Right. So how to how to 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 insert things in it, to insert things in the religion, uh, of course, you created the, the, that that uh, the loophole of that there are two wahids, and the second wahid, the first wahid is the Quran, the second wahid is the is the is the uh, is the hadith and the sunnah, and once you create, when you structure that idea firmly into the minds of Muslims, then you can start inserting a hadith. To the and and it is not a, a secret that uh, from historical records at one time there used to be a million ahadith, a million. So if there were million ahadith, it means that there were many liars and many cheaters and many people who were benefiting from writing ahadith. Yeah. You know, it, it is not. By the way, it's not like today. Today, paper is cheap. Writing is cheap. In those days, writing and documenting and things were laborious and and extensive exercise okay so they must have been been benefactors for this okay and things fall into place very very nicely you know i i want to mention something before we conclude is that um uh how, why why i mean there's some sociological aspects that that need to be discovered that i'm not a sociologist but sociologists can find a wonderful, you know, time looking into this. Why uh, uh, Muslims are willing to be blinded by the arguments in support of only two from the Sunni side and only two from the Shia side, two hadith, okay, uh, that contradicts the Mus'haf, right. and they are willing to go to extremes. To prove that these that they're going they're they're going through extremes to justify uh, 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 the validity of these hadith, okay? They're going to the extremes to 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 create loopholes, not to be uh, caught supportive of these hadith, yet not denying. The, uh, the 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 authenticity of these ahadith. In other words, they will not deny the authenticity of the ahadith, but they'll go to the moon and back to justify all kind of things, whether not 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 uh, prosecuting the, the 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 punishment of of apostasy, or to say that it is not valid now, or to say that the emir is the one who should, it's the prerogative of the emir all of a sudden, you know. Uh, yeah. That is mind boggling. And I think the reason for that is that 
uh, there could be different reasons. But what I want to 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 highlight is that this concept of the Senate, of the Senate, the the religion, the the parallel religion has become the Senate. What is the Senate? The chain of transmitters, right. the chain of transmission. Okay, so if the and they, they unabashedly say that the Senate of this hadith is, is great, perfect, strong, robust. Okay, there's no question mark about any of these people who com, who create this, who compose this Senate. Okay, yeah. and but you know what? But what if the if 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 the Senate is perfect and the hadith is wrong? Right. Well, I mean, so, someone could have concocted this at the time of the prophet, and someone, and but the Senate is perfect. Okay, you see, this argument is being used uh, uh, to say that, well, if you believe in, why, why don't you? Why are you poking hole in this Senate uh, concept? But uh, but uh, this is how we believe in the Mus'haf. You know, this is this is a fallacy. This is a fallacious construction. I don't believe in the, you know, suppose Musaylam al kadhab the Musaylam the liar, came up with verses of the Mus'haf, okay, at that time. And they were transmitted to us perfectly, perfectly. Does that mean we believe in what Musaylam al kadhab has said? So it, it, do we believe in the Mus'haf because it was transmitted to us perfectly? No, we don't believe in the Mus'haf because it was transmitted to us perfectly. Right. We, we, we believe in the Mus'haf because we believe, everyone, each one of us has to answer that question. Why do I believe in this book? Suppose, suppose as, as some, some, some Germans or some Christians say that the Mus'haf was uh, a book that the Prophet Muhammad uh, cheated. He, he put down some documents that he found at that time. Okay, let's say, okay, if if that is the case, so let's say that is the case, and the ch and then it has reached us whatever was concocted at that time. Does that mean I believe in it just because the chain it it, it arrived to us unspoiled, untouched, and adulterated? Does that mean I should believe in it? So 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 this religion, the Senate religion, is is so fallacious. It's not dangerous. It's fallacious. Okay, mm -hmm. one, one believes in something based on the argument, based on the discussion, based on the truth of that argument. Okay, that's how we believe in something. The concept of believing and validating and tasdiq to say sadaq Allah al -Azim. You know, it's not just because someone gave me a document. Yes. Okay, if someone uh, uh, transmitted the document through hundreds of years, I say okay, thanks. It was. It arrived to me in a good shape. Does that mean I, I should believe in it? Yeah, very good point, Doctor Omar. I think that's the problem these days. I mean, they always look at left and right, but they don't look at the Quran itself. You know what's actually Allah is saying. That's the whole problem. They just the chain is going and on and on and on. You know the people standing in the line. They don't know what is the line about. <laughs> You you have to you cannot just follow somebody like that. You have to go and really ask yourself what I am doing, what is the right thing, what you know. You know the, 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 the communist manifesto, whatever whoever wrote it, you know, way back after three hundred years, if people see it, okay, yeah. they might see the original uh, manifesto. Does that mean that they should believe in it as it's the way it should we should govern or we should have an economic system? I mean. Uh, you know the the, the 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 model of the story is that is what back to the what Allah documented on the uh, on the as as the prophet saying ya qawmi in ya when Allah says in the mushaf that the prophet is saying oh my my qawm my people have uh, ignored or they have deserted the quran that is uh, that is uh, something that we see nowadays. You know, you you look at the Quran and 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 you discuss the Quran, and people become agitated, very agitated. You know, I wonder why. V very nervous, very upset. 
they, they, they cannot wait to jump onto speculative argument. Look, speculative argument. Speculative by their definition. By their definition. Okay? And, and, and now, what are the implications of this? The implications of this is that, uh, number one, I think many people uh, many people would be hesitant to join Islam because they say, wow, if I join Islam, I'm just like joining a mafia. I cannot get out of it, you know? The, the, so, so that discourages people from uh, becoming Muslims. Second is that we look like, uh, Muslims look like a, a religion of barbarism, you know? Uh, and and the, 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 that does not respect ideas, opinions, and does not respect freedom. Absolutely, you know these these are the two two dangerous things that that are implications of what we. And the third, the third is is the is the ground reality, is the ground reality where you can uh, not you and I, but someone in power. Can someone in power who has the in, in sulta sulta authority, who can easily label someone an apostate, right? That's true. Yeah. I spoke to somebody yesterday in Pakistan, and he was telling me that he's saying, "Sir Fraz, that things are changed now. You know, the young generation they have phones, mobile phones, so." They have a lot of stuff available in social media. They have questions about Quran, some ayats, and so they go and ask the the person, you know, the Malvis in the mosque, and they ask them, "What is the answer for this? This is what it's saying in Quran." And because they don't know much about the Quran Malvi themselves, so they are referring to Hadith and say, no, "You are kafir. You should not be asking this question." <laughs> so, so, so. Young generation is like. He's saying the things have changed. The young population, they have mobile phones, they have everything available on there. They show those things to the Maulis, and the Maulis say, no, this is, you don't believe in that, you're coffee. Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's um, extremely, I mean, it, it's, we're not talking about something theoretical and something theological and something that goes back to the medieval times. We're talking about something very, very modern, something contemporary, so a serious problem. Uh, when 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 Rishdi uh, did his uh, thing, whatever I mean, let him. I mean, when people uh, when people uh, desecrate the Mus'haf uh, or 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 or, uh, or or have cartoons against uh, the the Prophet, uh, do we like it? Of course, it's a very abject, abhorring uh, behavior, extremely ugly behavior, you know. Uh, but but is it? Does it warrant the the death penalty? You know that's that's not how how things uh, work. That I'm, I'm uh, you know that that's not that, that's you know many Muslims, many Muslims, especially of the of the of the lyrics and the shiuch and all of that, which are part of these. Most of them, most of them, the vast majority are part of institutions. These institute, you know, just like um, uh, ministers of a government. Or, or secretaries in the U.S. government. The secretaries of the U.S. government, I love the name of it. The, 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 I think the U.S. got it right when they named the so-called ministers secretaries. I think they got why. Because they execute the policy. policy yeah. they, they, I love it. They execute the policy. Okay? You see? So, <laughs> so, so, so it, 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 I think that uh, uh, it, we Muslims really have to 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 start uh, uh, see the implications of of a behavior that has nothing uh, to do with Islam has nothing at all to do with Islam now. You know, it's not a matter of being apologetic. You know, why, you know, Islam is haq. If you're a physicist and you discover that something that may lead to an explosion, let's say, I don't right. know, something, why should you apologize for that? Exactly. I mean, th this is truth, reality, right? This is truth and reality. 
Okay. Uh, the the cons the 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 concept or the practice of using the brain had been stressed deeply in the mushaf deeply. You know, afala yaqulun, afala yatafakkarun, and of course we talked about this before. They mean different things. Afala yatadabbarun. All of these are functions of the brain. You know, uh, 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 Muslims, by virtue of accepting. I accepting the concept of madahib, you know, the concept of madahib, uh, uh, the concept of taqlid in the Shiaism, Shiaism, it's much worse, by the way, the concept of taqlid, you have to have taqlid. The Sunnis have a slightly different, but it's more politically connected, the concept of bay'ah. You know, so the Shias, they say that you have to make taqlid to the, a certain imam, the Sunnis have gone in a political direction. They say you have to make bay'ah. Whoever dies without giving a bay'ah to an emir, he is, he, his death is a jahiliya death. Right. Imagine. This is what we were brought up to believe. So, so the politicization of Islam had started a long time ago. The politicization. Islam yeah. is beyond politicization islam is beyond politics and islam is beyond the state is beyond the state politics end in the state that's the terminal point of politics okay islam goes beyond the state okay so um, uh, what you said in the beginning of the program you give you a very good example me and the government me and allah Two separate things. And Quran is all about, you know, you and Allah. So nobody should interfere. You know. it, 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 it is, you know, it is the politicization. This is the, the dangerous thing. It's the politicization of Islam that really served, uh, 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 served uh, nefarious uh, objectives. The, right. the, 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 uh, now, of course, one will say, you know, one may say, uh, am I implying that uh, that uh, that Islam is not relevant to governance? Absolutely, I'm not implying that. I'm not. Islam is central. The principles of Islam are central to governance. And Allah says it. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Ma'idah, to those who do not rule by the Torah, uh, and those Allah warns, those who do not rule by the Torah, those who do not rule by the Injil, and those Bible, and those who do not rule by the uh, Quran. Uh, now, uh, Allah warns them. Allah warns them. So, so the rule, the, the the governance has to be based on these, on the, on the on the godly principles, on right. the godly principles. You know, even in the U.S. You know, does the U.S. rule by godly principles? Absolutely, absolutely. The the principles, the, the the key principles. Of course, does France rule? Does any country in the world rule by godly principles? Yes. I'll give you a very simple examples. Very simple examples. I'm talking about the godly rules. I'm not talking about modalities. Okay, there's a difference. You know, in the U.S., in the U.S., if if you find that there's a killer, someone committed a crime, he killed someone else, and the government did not do anything. Did not do anything. Would you leave? Would you stay in the US? No. Because you know what? Because it might happen to your wife. Right. Right? The, okay. If someone, if you hear that someone, a car was stolen and the government did absolutely nothing. They say it's fine. Someone else will come next may steal your car. So you would leave the US. Right? And don't don't say don't address yourself or myself. Talk to a Christian. Talk to a Christian. Ask the Christian the same questions. You know? So, so Allah gave the key, non non uh, uh, changeable uh, 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 laws that cannot change with time these are the ones that allah talks about in the Muslim. they cannot change 
unless we are and, and as long as we remain humans <laughs> they cannot change they cannot change look look at the variance but by the way they say wait a minute uh, uh, but uh, but uh, the punishment of of uh, of this in 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 the us is different no 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 uh, than than what allah said in the quran absolutely not allah gave a, a spectrum of punishments allah gave us pu- punishment he said don't exceed al hudud don't exceed the boundary of these of these of this spectrum right. but within this spectrum it's it's extremely flexible you know which country which name one country name one society in the world where if you steal you'll get away with it officially not not practically <laughs> <laughs> you laugh because i know but officially no place no where, where did by the way where did this come from this is allah's law right this is allah's law you know why because i can if we were to think about uh, i can justify to you that certain people may 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 need to steal but allah said no okay anyways that's that's a bit uh, moving yeah. on the- well thank you dr omar for your uh, research about this important subject thanks for joining us today my and pleasure again, uh, if you have anything in the end of the program you want to send it to the viewers give the message to our viewers. thank you so much you always ask these tough questions but i'll try to answer uh, i think that uh, the the key is that uh, allah says do not follow the ancestors okay do not follow what others have said and done so i think the message for us um uh, is to is to think carefully and to firmly believe in in uh, to to firmly understand the message that was sent to all of us we don't have to believe in it we don't have to allah said la ikraha fi din but i think that we need to to empower ourselves to have that confidence in ourselves that we can understand things if we dig a little bit and do a little bit of homework if something doesn't make sense we should take it number one and second to something is not valid based on the status of who said it okay very, very well said thank you dr mo for your time thanks for you thanks viewers for watching our show today Allah is family. Assalamu alaikum brother. Thank yes. you.